In this lecture, we are going to learn about round robin scheduling algorithm. So, what is round robin scheduling algorithms? So, to understand that, let's first look at what was the problem with first come first serve algorithm. So, it was potentially bad for smaller jobs. So if you have a few shorter jobs behind a one very big long job, then your waiting time, your response time, all those became very screwed up. Okay, they became very large due to just one long job. So to remove that problem of uh, some very big job, which is bought, uh, just blocking the small jobs, we have a round robin algorithm. So what it does, so now you have, it says that when you have here round robin, so each of those processes, in your CPU ready queue, they get small slices of time. Okay, so it is not that okay, one job when it is started to being served, it will be completed. Okay, they have small time slices in which your job will be served. And if your job is longer than that time slice or time quantum, it will be now replaced by other job. So after that quantum expires, the process is preempted and then it is added to the queue. So let's look at this example with some example. So let's say we have three jobs, J1, J2 and J3. So what happens is, so each of them now it's not that in the queue, let's say that J1, J2 and J3, they enter like this. So it's not that J3 will be served completely and then only J2 and then J1. So let's say this is four seconds, this is five seconds and this is three seconds and your time slice is one second. So what will happen is, that if this is a timeline, then it will start from 0 to 1, J3 will come and then you are in this J2 and then J1. So this is 3 seconds and then again, so what will happen? J3, J2 and J1 will come. This is 6 seconds and it will go like this. So 9 seconds. So again, J3 j2 and j1 so now what will happen j3 will end because one second again here it got j3 j2 j1 so j j so j3 is of three seconds so first second here then it got the so j3 j2 j1 and then again j3 got a chance here and then j3 got a chance here of one second so three seconds is done so now this work is done now j2 is of five second so now here in this second what will happen again j3 will not get a chance j2 will get a chance j1 will get a chance again now what happens four second is done done for j1 it will also come out now everything will be for J2. So this is the idea time slices around Robin each for CPU will give its one second time slice to each of the job in a cyclic manner. So n processes in the ready queue and time let's say the time slice is Q seconds. So each process gets one by nth of the CPU time. So it's very fair each of them are getting equal slices of time and no one is blocking anyone or not starving anyone. So in chunks of time Q units they get so maximum waiting time when you enter a Q is what so it is bounded it's exactly fixed that it will be n minus 1 into Q so this is there so now let's see so Q is large if Q your Q becomes very large the time slice so in fact this will convert into first come first serve because then every job will be their time unit for which they will work will become shorter than Q and if Q is small, it will be interleaved. But one thing you rem should remember is never make the time slice very small. What will happen if it is very small? So can you answer that? So if it is becoming very small, what will be the problem? Now we know that there is a context switch that happens. Okay. So a context switch happens between the time uh, when a process changes, uh, the CPU runs another process. And this time, if context switch time is greater than your time slice Q, then what will happen? There will be a lot of overhead will be great. Overhead will be too much and that will create problems. Okay. So this you should remember. And now we will move forward. So we will look at one example, which I was giving, but it is much better here. So you have example with time quantum is 20 CPU gives 20 seconds 
to each of the of the processes now there are four processes and we will start here so Gantt chart again that don't know pronunciation so here you have the timeline basically I will call it timeline you have so processes four processes their time units for the time for completion is 53 seconds 8 seconds 68 and 24 seconds now this is the remaining time okay so this is now if nothing has started so each of them have this much of remaining time so now uh, there is a scheduler which runs basically this round robin algorithm so first it will put on the cpu process p1 now let's say so it's 53 seconds were there in this now it has become 33 seconds okay next what happens p2 comes and now it was just a short job 8 seconds so in one time slice below that it finishes so after 28 seconds 20 to 28 was given to p2 and because it was of just 8 seconds it finished its work so now third process is assigned the cpu and it was 68 seconds job now time remaining after this time slices 48 seconds 28 second of work has been done so for p4 24 second is the total time now we will in this time slice it becomes 20 seconds is done so now four seconds are remaining again i come to p1 round robin you should remember so p1 it comes now from 33 it became 13 because 20 seconds of work again done for p3 now it became so 48 to 28 again now let's see lot of things happen p3 is done now very few jobs are remaining 13 seconds for p1 so it will be done this one has no work 28 seconds for this one so this will have another two slices required this will have just one slice it will be done so finally p3 will have the end okay so like this there was scheduling and finally it took 153 seconds okay so things to analyze after this waiting time let's try to calculate the waiting time so waiting time is the time taken by the process to be waiting in the ready queue so when p1 initially it went into the queue it for being served so now it took 20 seconds cpu time was given to it but then what happened now it is being served again so here again it went into the ready queue and then it was served at 68 seconds okay t is equal to 68 so it waited this time period was for waiting so 68 minus 20 is the first waiting time then again after this it was preempted and then it started again at this point so this amount of time again is the waiting time so 112 minus 88 so this is the total waiting time which is 72 so for p2 it's just one time it had to wait for 20 seconds for p3 so first time it had to wait so let me change the color so it had to wait 28 seconds then it had to wait for 88 minus 48 seconds and finally p3 came again where it came 125 so 125 minus 108 so this are these are the waiting times average waiting time so four processes are there we divide the total time by 4 66 1 by 4 seconds and average completion time so when do they complete so p1 completes at 125 p2 completes at just 28 so this in round robin also you get if something is smaller time unit its response time will be lower then p3 completes at 153 p4 at 112 so average time is 104.25 so this is for the round robin and what else so round robin better for short jobs and context switching has to be added okay so that is there how do you choose now the time slices so you should not have it very big otherwise it will result into first come first serve and if too small then context which becomes over greater than that and there will be overhead okay so actual choice of time slices in unix so they have they are giving some example okay so this is there about round robin and context switching so i hope you understand this thanks a lot